Good morning, everyone who's watching the timer, just nice and subdued right at the zero. So great job, everyone, this morning. It's great to see you, uh, everyone joining online, too. It's good to see you. Let's stand and let's sing together this morning. everyone. Welcome to our services. Nice to have you here and to those who might be at home this morning and for whatever reason, my wife Bonnie <laughs> and four grandkids. I'll get home as soon as I can. <laughs> Not. 
Uh, today, <laughs> today is the final day to sign up to be part of the uh, Christmas choir. Uh, the choir will perform uh, the Christmas Dessert Theater again this year, the first weekend of December. Practice begins October 9th, so sign up today at Sign Up Central, and uh, you can grab information on it there as, as well. Uh, discovery class begins next Sunday, uh, Sunday, September 25th, during Sunday school uh, at 8.45, and it's a two- to three-week course, and it's about uh, what is Covenant Church, uh, how do I become a member, more information, and see Pastor if you have questions on that. Um, next slide is Solid Rock School of Discipleship Preview Day is coming up. This is at Lake Beauty Bible Camp from 10 to 3 on Saturday, October 8th. You can hear from current students, uh, worship during chapel service, so you can tour the campus, meet professors, learn about the next steps to building a firm foundation for your Christian life. If there are enough students and parents interested, uh, the church van might be an option for everyone to ride together. Uh, you can visit their uh, website, solidrockmn.org slash visit to register, or you can talk to uh, Josh, Josh Williamson. Uh, a salmon dinner is coming up. This will be fun and exciting and tasty. The salmon dinner fundraiser, it's for KICY Radio, and this will be taking place on Sunday, October 16th at 530 and we need to know how many people will be attending the dinner, so there's a sign-up in the back as well, or you can register online for it, so uh, check out their website as well. And we actually have a little video uh, more about KICY Radio right now. We listened to KICY since we first started, back in the early 60s. My mom and dad would always uh, turn the radio on early in the morning, so to this day I still wake up early in the morning and listen to KICY. It had never been done before to direct a signal from one country into a foreign country uh, in their language. And Ted Haney began that process in 1995. Ted actually went to Washington, D.C. at one point and spoke with the FCC connections that he had. There was one more hurdle that had to be reached, and that was that the International Telecommunications Union had to sign off on that as well. And the petition was made, and over the course of two years, it had to be publicly noted three different times for nations to complain. And in the course of three years, no one said a word. And after that three-year process, KICY had the full authority through the International Telecommunications Union and the FCC here in the United States to erect two new towers out at our tower site every night. At 11 o'clock, we turn all three towers on, and our signal is being directional west into Russia, giving us uh, about 2,000 miles across the Russian mainland. My uncle uh, was a big radio man, and it was still like during the Cold War, so nobody were allowed to talk about anything about America. So he would always lock himself in his door and me as a little girl would be like, sneak in and ask him, so what kind of language is that? You know, he said, well, shh, that's American. And then a few minutes later, uh, it switched to Russian. And I remember thinking to myself, oh, I know how to speak American there. Later in life, I realized that I listened to KICY. If each member in every Covenant Church across the United States and Canada donated one dollar, KICY's budget would be helped immensely. Uh, nearly a quarter of our budget would be covered with that. You can be a part of this ministry to Western Alaska and the Russian Far East. The cost of living is expensive in Western Alaska, and we run our transmitter at 50,000 watts, 24 hours a day. And in Nome, that translates to about $11,500 a month. In electricity costs. Your donation helps offset those costs significantly, and we couldn't do it without your participation.
So again, the salmon dinner is uh, October 16th at 5.30. Again, you've got to sign up uh, by next Sunday, September 25th, so we have the right amount of salmon to order. Uh, more announcements in your bulletin. If you'd like to give to the ministries of United Covenant Church or you have a prayer request, you can place your offerings and request in the box below the sound of booth studio or go to our website. You can give online there too. Uh, sign your guest pads and stand up and greet your neighbors. Search the world, but it couldn't fill me. A man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. Then you came along.
it is your breath that's in our lungs, the very breaths that we take uh, are speaking your name. The reason that we are here, the reason that we live is to be in community with you and to um, just to be giving our everything, even the very breath in our lungs, uh, to praise in your name because you are worthy of that praise. And so we just, we just pray that you would just soften our hearts to hear that message and to just open our eyes and ears to see and hear what you are doing and what you will continue to do uh, to those that, uh, that follow you and, and uh, believe in your son, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 8, verses 11 through 17. The Lord has given me a strong warning not to think like everyone else does. He said, don't call everything a conspiracy like they do, and don't live in dread of what frightens them. Make the Lord of heaven's armies holy in your life. He is the one you should fear. He is the one you should, that should make you tremble. He will keep you safe. But to Israel and Judah, he will be a stone that makes people stumble, a rock that makes them fall. And for the people of Jerusalem, he will be a trap and a snare. Many will stumble and fall, never to rise again. They will be snared and captured. Preserve the teaching of God and trust his instructions to those who follow me. I will wait for the Lord who has turned away from the descendants of Jacob. I will put my hope in him. And then from the book of Acts, uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 8, we have Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the 3 o'clock prayer service. As they approached the temple, a man lame from birth was being carried in. Each day he was put, put beside the temple gate, the one called the beautiful gate, so he could beg from the people going into the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for some money. Peter and John looked at him intently, and Peter said, look at us. The man lame looked at them eagerly, expecting some money. But Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, get up and walk. Then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed. And strengthened. He jumped up, stood on his feet, and began to walk. Then, walking, leaping, and praising God, he went into the temple with them. Testing. Oh, there it is. Well, here I am. <laughs> so, um, one thing a lot of people don't know is I really enjoy to write music, and I like to play guitar. Most people knew that. but um, So, I write a lot of songs, and usually all of them have a story behind them. Um, it kind of made me want to write a song about a circumstance in my life or something like that. Um, but with this one I'm about to, sh about to share, it was one of my first songs ever. And um, like I said, usually there's something that prompts me to write a song. But to be honest with you, I one day I was just in the shower and came out, went in my room, grabbed a notebook, grabbed my guitar, and with without even like a line in my head or any melody or at all, about 25 minutes later, I realized I had written a song. And I like to tell people that really the Lord wrote it. It wasn't me. It wasn't until after about 25 minutes that the melody was done, lyrics were done, chords were done, and then it just hit me. I'm like, wow, I just wrote a song. You know, and so I like to say that God wrote this. Um, 
because I didn't really have a thought going into it like other songs. Um, yeah, so it's called I'm Made New. It's just it's meant to be encouraging and kind of sharing a little bit about me. I'm made new. And, of course, it's nothing I did. Um, and, you know, for a long time, I was struggling with the thought of sharing any song that I wrote um, because I'm nervous. And even though you may not see it, I can feel my heartbeat in my stomach right now. And <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of that feeling. But um, we're going to go for it because... I was reminded, like, last week, it's really not about me, you know, it's about God, especially since he wrote it, so I'm just the messenger, so, yeah, I'll just get right into it. I know that I can be foolish, but when you look down on me, you see you. Cause while I was still a sinner, there Jesus was Hanging on that wooden cross just for all of us Now I know who to trust Now I know who to trust Cause death was defeated when Jesus came alive And we all need to choose Give him our whole lives, take it from me, from my testimony, I made new. Although this life is difficult, your Holy Spirit helps me make it through. Although this life is blinding, you have opened up my eyes, I made new. Cause while I was still a sinner, there Jesus was. Hanging on that wooden cross, just for all of us. Now I know who to trust. Now I know who to trust. Cause death was defeated. Jesus came alive, and we all need to choose to give him our whole lives. Take it from me, from my testimony, I made new. As we come to our prayer time today, just um, some things to lift up in prayer. And um, so we need to pray. You know, we saw that clip about Alaska, about Nome, Alaska, and it just so happens that right now, um, Nome is going through a really bad storm. It's like you know, hurricane force winds and stuff, and, and apparently their fuel tanks have even tipped over, so that's really not good. So we just got to pray for Noam right now. They're having like a the worst storm in 100 years type thing, so we're going to lift them up. But um, And by the way, that, that uh, as they come, even if you don't like salmon, you know, some people, it's salmon, you either love it or hate it type thing. Even if you're not a salmon person, still come, and um, we just need to know if you're going to eat the salmon, because we got to get enough, you know, so we're going to put that report in there, but just come and hear what's going on. 
with that ministry. And um, anyway, that's... Okay, so the other thing is um, with... Oh, there, there's some praises. And Levi Ramsey had his scans... So we, we, we keep praying for Levi and um, praise the Lord, the cancer did not go into his lungs. So that's, you know, praise God for that. It hasn't gone into his bones or anything. Um, so this, the tumor is still there and his, he's scheduled for surgery a week from tomorrow, is my understanding. But anyway, so it's really very encouraging news. That's the main thing we wanted to hear, that it hasn't spread or anything. But we're going to keep praying that God's going to continue the miracle, you know, and just totally gone. We just pray for that. And but it's very encouraging news. We need to um, pray for Teal Edis as, um, so Teal, a little young girl, um, she ha had a, um, basically had really high fevers and they couldn't figure out what was wrong. But a praise for that one, they were afraid it was even cancer or something, but thank God it's not. And also it's not any kind of autoimmune thing. They haven't really figured out what's going on, but her uh, ability to fight, um, or her immune system, the thing in her blood that fights up, or that builds her immunity is, is down. So we just got to pray for a miracle for her. But she is home from the children's hospital. So we thank, you know, so again, there's a lot of praises, but we pray for the completion of, of that. So she needs to kind of be in isolation a bit. I think, is Jade still here? I don't know if Jade's still here, but anyway. Um, and we'll lift them up in prayer and keep praying for Debbie Ellis and Wanda Hofer is in the hospital, but... Um, Anyway, anybody, maybe somebody has an encouraging word or something, or uh, does anybody have something? And we're going to hear a little bit more later on some great things. But um, anyway, again, you can put your prayer requests in that little box back there. We will pray for them. And, but let's just, let's just go to the Lord in prayer right now. So, Father God, we do just lift up these concerns. We thank you for Levi. God, we just have to praise you that, that the cancer hasn't spread or anything. But God, we are praying for 100% healing. And, you know, we would even pray that he doesn't have to have a surgery. But Lord, if he does, you know, we, we don't care how you heal him. We just pray for total healing and bless him. Bless jo Jocelyn and the boys. But just be with him, Lord, and bring him through. And we thank you for that, Father. We just praise you in advance and thank you again for what you've already done. We pray for Teal. Thank you that she's home from the hospital. And bless Sheena and Jade. And, and we just lift up that family. Lord, pr pray that, um, that you would totally, again, bring 100% healing to her. In Jesus' name, help Debbie, help Wanda, and others that... I know I'm probably forgetting people here, but Lord, you know all of our needs, and we just present them to you, and we thank you, Father. We thank you for wonderful things that you have done, and we lift up Nome, Alaska today, pray for the ministry of KICY, but God, we pray for that community that you would help the storm to, to end quicker than they think, and we pray that you would just help them, Lord, help that community and, and all of western Alaska as they're under that severe storm. Just protect them, protect people's lives and help them in Jesus' name. Pray for our nation, our president, our, uh, our community, and we say thank you, Father. Bless Christians around the world. Bless our missionaries, and we say thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, well, Missionaries, you know, I was thinking about KICY. I, I worked there as a young young adult, and if I was still young and single, and all that stuff, and wanted an Arctic adventure, you know, not everybody wants that or feels called to it. But man, I'd be there. That is so fun. Just, you know, serving God is fun. I mean, 
Hey, it's good to see Joanne Casey there. <laughs> good to see you. Um, but uh, anyway, it's just so fun to serve the Lord. And yeah. You know, when Jesus said, I've come to give you abundant life, abundant, it doesn't mean that everything's going to be roses all the time, but you know what? He does give us a rich and abundant life, and he's so good. So we just can't say enough about that. Anyway, so um, just a little bit of review. We talked about, we're in the book of Acts, and we talked about how Jesus Christ uh, came, God's only son came into the world to ultimately die on the cross for our sins and pay the penalty that should have been ours. He died in our place on the cross. Um, he rose again on the third day, and he, you know, he conquered sin and death through his resurrection. And, and through him, we can have, the significance of that is that we can be forgiven. We can have the gift of eternal life. We can have the Holy Spirit of God in us, be born again, born of the Spirit, and have the promise of heaven. And so that is available to everyone. And that is the most wonderful, and that's why they call it the gospel or the good news, because it's for everyone. No matter what you've done, no matter what mistakes you've made, if you come to the Lord and turn from your sin and repent, he will give you a new life. And he's going to set you free. But, you know, it's a gift that you have to receive because he's offered it to everyone. But a gift doesn't do any good unless you receive it, right? So if somebody said, hey, Dan, I'm going to pay for you to have a, you know, one of those fancy uh, seats in the Lambeau field, you know, probably the, I've never been there, but but you know what I mean, the, the fancy ones, right, that are super expensive. Or if you're at the purple place, at the, <laughs> the, um, the Vikings, then, you know, so I'm nonpartisan here. But I'm just saying that, that if, you know, I'm, I'm using it as an example is what I'm trying to get out here. So if, if somebody offered you one of those, the place of your choice, and, and to say, man, it's totally paid for. You just got to go and go to it. Well, it wouldn't do me any good if I didn't go to it, right? To experience it, I'd have to go there and receive it. But And that's how it is with the Lord. You, you have to jump in. At some point, you just got to gotta jump in head first because if you don't, you're going to watch life pass you by and you won't... You won't have that gift of eternal life. And we all need it. We all need to be forgiven. We need Jesus. So Jesus came. He paid on the, on the cross for us, rose again. And then he, he appeared to his disciples for uh, over a 40-day period. We talked about that. And then also uh, at the end when he was ascending back into heaven, he says, he said, now I want you to go. And tell all nations, you know, make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything I command, and then uh, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. So that was his promise. So he gave them this great commission to go out and make disciples. And so they knew what their mission was, but then he says, but I want you to wait in Jerusalem. Before you do that, wait in Jerusalem until you are clothed with power from on high. Okay, so they, they went, after he ascended, they went back to Jerusalem. This is all review from last week or last couple weeks. Anyway, so they went back and they waited. They were praying, waiting. So for 10 days they waited. And then on the 10th day was the day of Pentecost. It was a, a great feast for the Jewish people. And all these people had come to Jerusalem to celebrate Pentecost, and during that time, the Holy Spirit came upon the believers, the disciples and the rest of the believers. There's about 120 of them, and the, and the Holy Spirit came in power, and they began to speak in other languages. Tongues of fire were on them, and they're praising God in all these different languages, and all the people came to see what was going on, 
And as they came, Peter got up and he preached the gospel, told them to turn to Jesus. And at that time, um, the church was born. And, and there was 3, 000, about 3,000 that came to the Lord that day. So we talked about that last week. So that's, that's your review. Okay, so, um, and we know that, that the community of believers, um, it kept growing. It says that God was adding to their number daily those that were being saved. So people kept coming to Christ. It was so encouraging. And then um, as um, who who read the script? It wasn't Carrie. He did the announcements. Who? Charlie. Sorry, Charlie. Charlie did read the scripture about um, how Peter and John were on their way to the temple. And there's this man begging for money, a man who'd been there for years, and, and he's begging for money. That was how he, made, how he could survive. And, and they said, you know, silver or gold we don't have, but what we have we're going to give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And they, they took him by the hand, and this guy was healed. I mean, it was a miracle. And he's walking, he's... He, more than walking, he's like leaping and praising God. And I mean, it was amazing. And all the people came to see what was going on. I mean, it was just like, what in the world? You know, this guy who's, who's been a fixture there at that place was praising God and walking. And everybody was just astounded. And, and so Peter, he uses his opportunity. And it's just like Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came. And all the people came, he saw, I mean, he's a total opportunist. You know, he uses the opportunity to share the good news. And so once again, he's using this opportunity, this amazing thing to share the gospel, the good news about Jesus. And so, in fact, it says that here, uh, chapter 3 of verse 12, chapter, yeah, chapter 3, verse 12. Peter saw his opportunity and addressed the crowd People of Israel, he said, what is so surprising about this? And why stare at us as though we had made this man walk by our own power or godliness? For it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of all our ancestors, who has brought glory to his servant Jesus by doing this. This is the same Jesus whom you handed over and rejected before Pilate, despite Pilate's decision to release him. You rejected this holy, righteous one and instead demanded the release of a murderer. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead, and we are witnesses of this fact. Through faith in the name of Jesus, this man was healed, and you know how crippled he was before. Faith in Jesus' name has healed him before your very eyes. Friends, I realize that what you, but what you and your leaders did to Jesus was done in ignorance. But God was fulfilling what all the prophets had foretold about the Messiah, that he must suffer these things. Now repent of your sins and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped away. Isn't that beautiful? So repent, turn away from your sins, so that your sins will be wiped away. Your slate will be clean. You know, you're going to be right before God. Then times of refreshment will come from the presence of the Lord, and he will again send you Jesus, your appointed Messiah. For he must remain in heaven until the time for the final restoration of all things, as God promised long ago through his holy prophets. Okay, so Jesus must remain in heaven until the restoration of all things. Okay, so that's the time that we're in now, right? We're waiting for Jesus to, because he promised he's coming back. And he will come back soon, I believe. And we've got to be ready. because. Um, but he's going to remain in heaven until he returns, until the restoration of all things. Okay, Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. Listen carefully to everything he tells you. 
Then Moses said, anyone who will not listen to that prophet will be completely cut off from God's people. Starting with Samuel, every prophet spoke about what is happening today. You are the children of those prophets, and you are included in the covenant God promised to your ancestors. For God said to Abraham, through your descendants, all the families on earth will be blessed. Okay, so all the families. So um, even if you're not Jewish, you know, all the families of earth will be blessed. When God raised up his servant Jesus, he sent him first to you people of Israel to bless you by turning each of you back from your sinful ways. While Peter and John were speaking to the people, they were confronted by the priests, the captain of the temple guard, and some of the Sadducees. These leaders were very disturbed that Peter and John were teaching the people that through Jesus there is a resurrection of the dead. Okay, so these religious leaders, they were not into this at all because they were the people that had Jesus killed, right? So they didn't like that. And they didn't like anybody talking about Jesus. They arrested them, and, and since it was already evening, put them in jail until morning. But many of the people who heard the, their message believed it. So the number of believers now totaled about 5,000 men, not counting women and children. Well, that's crazy. That's crazy because at the at the time at this time, uh, scholars believe that the population of Jerusalem was about forty thousand people. Okay, so when now when there was a special event like Pentecost or Passover or one of the holidays like that, people Jewish people and others from all over the world would come to Jerusalem. And they would, the, the town of Jerusalem, or the city of Jerusalem would, at, at those times, it would swell um, to like around 250,000 estimate. That's a huge, you know, from 40,000 to, I mean, that's, that's a lot of people. It's kind of like going to, uh, what's the place in South Dakota where Spur, Sturgis? Sturgis. I was going to say Spurgis. I keep thinking of sturgeon. So, anyway, <laughs> you know what I mean. Sturgis, that's where all the bikers go, right? So Sturgis isn't that big of a town, but, man, when those people are there, it's crazy, right? I've not been there during that time, but you get the idea. So that's, that's Jerusalem. It just really, but think about it, 40,000 people, and all of a sudden now 5,000 of them? Are at, and that's conservative estimate. You know, even if it's 5,000, um, that's about 12% of the population. That's conservative. It's probably more than, it's, it's at least 12%, maybe 15, 20, who knows? It's, it's a lot of people. You can understand why these religious leaders were freaking out. Like, everybody's turning to Christ. And it's like, oh my goodness, we've got to stop this thing. This is out of control. And so, um, so all of a sudden, the church, it's going from 3,120 to now 5,000 plus. And it's just keeping, keeping on. The next day, the council of all the rulers and elders and teachers of religious law met in Jerusalem Annas, the high priest, was there along with Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and the other relatives of the high priest. They brought in the two disciples and demanded, by what power or in whose name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers and elders of our people, are we being questioned today because we've done a good deed for a crippled man? Do you want to know how he was healed? Let me clearly state to all of you that, and to all the people of Israel that he was healed by the powerful name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, the man you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. For Jesus is the one referred to in the scriptures where it says the stone that you builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. 
The members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. They also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing right there among them, there was nothing the council could say, so they ordered Peter and John out of the council chamber and conferred among themselves. What should we do with these men, they asked each other. We can't deny that they have performed a miraculous sign, and everybody in Jerusalem knows about it. But to keep them from spreading their propaganda any further, we must warn them not to speak to anyone in Jesus' name again. So they called the apostles back in and commanded them never again to speak or teach in the name of Jesus. So how do you think that went for them? Not well, right? But Peter and John replied, Do you think God wants us to obey you rather than him? We cannot stop telling about everything we've seen and heard. The council then threatened them further, but they finally let them go because they didn't know how to punish them without starting a riot. For everyone was praising God for this miraculous sign, the healing of a man who had been lame for more than 40 years. Okay, so that is an amazing um, miracle. A man who had been lame for more than 40 years gets healed. And everybody just, I mean, it was just a testimony of God's grace and God's power. And um, so, you know, the Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So God did miracles in Bible times. God does miracles in the times that we live in. God was faithful back then. He's faithful now. He's going to be faithful in the future. God is good. So, um, you know, God answers prayer, right? When we pray, we always say when, when we pray, God, you know, God moves. It's impossible to pray and have nothing happen, right? So stuff is going to happen. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't, you know, we can't predict what God's going to do or how he's going to do it, but we know that God is moving and God is powerful. And, and so I think we talked about this last week, how Annalie Munson um, was playing volleyball. And I'm going to ask Annalie to come up even now. I've asked God bless her to um, share a little bit. But here's a picture. Now, this is a disturbing. You don't have to look at it. It's pretty rough. But anyway, there's her ankle. So um, you can avert your eyes if you need to. <laughs> anyway, so Annalie, go ahead and share what, what happened. So yeah, I'm here to testify what God did for me. So we were at a, it was kind of like a tournament um, with a couple other teams there. And in the middle of our um, last game during the last set, I was coming down from a block, and my ankle, as you can see, is pretty much touching the ground. And I believe without a doubt that it was broken. But after it happened, because I couldn't even stand up, my coach had to help me up. And we went over to the bench, and one of the girls on the other team quickly got the athletic trainer and ice. And Cindy Moreland and Addie Warner were there, and they came over, and they prayed over it. And um, the athletic trainer, he was looking at it, and he was like, I'm pretty sure this is broken. You have to go, like, in for, like, an x-ray. Like, he was saying, um, like, the, like, 24 hours later. Um, and then I just testified, and I told him that um, it was not broke. I don't believe it was broke. I believe it was broken, but Cindy Moreland and Addie Warren had prayed over it and that it wasn't broken anymore, and God healed it. And the next day, I went in for an x-ray. The doctor looked at it, and he said that somehow the bones in my ankle expl expanded for a split second to make room for my ankle to roll, causing it not to break. and said it was just a high ankle sprain. But, um, because we went in the day after, and during the night and stuff, my ankle was, it was like triple in size probably, it was huge, and, um, I believe, like, without a doubt that God was healing it that entire time, and, um, that's what God does. Like, I honestly, I should be up here in crutches and a boot right now. So that just shows you what God does. <laughs> Yeah.
Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. You know, it, it's just wonderful. And 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 this is, uh, you know, this is a side note here. But I got to tell you that as as a pastor, um, when the people of the church, other than me, because I love to pray for people. Like I'll pray for people all day long. You know, I, it's my favorite hobby, probably. Right, <laughs> but um, but. You know, when, when the people of the church are doing it, that's gold for me. That's what I like to see, because it's not just about the magical guy up here that, you know, it's like, oh, you know. <laughs> Listen, you guys got the same Holy Spirit that I got. So you just go for it. Just step out. Pray in Jesus' name. The power is in the Lord, okay? It's in the Lord. And God is so good. And he's moving. And when there's a sign like that, and thank you for sharing, Annalie. I tell you, when there's a sign like that, we should share that because there's power in um, what God does. And there's power in, in uh, the testimony, right? And so God is, God is moving. And um, again, here's this word well, and I, I'll just stop for just a second because, you know, like Isaac was, well, you know, hey, why not? Isaac, you should share that about when you were driving home the other night. Yeah. Anyway, just whatever. I know. Come on. <laughs> Sorry. Well, um, so it was two weekends ago. Um, I was up in Bemidji, Minnesota. My fiance lives up there. Um, and I was driving back. We had engagement pictures and everything. We wanted to get the sunset and all that. Whatever. So I knew it was going to be a late night. It's about a five-hour drive to Eau Claire. Um, and I was, like, my contacts that day, I had put, like, super expired contact solution in because I couldn't find mine. And, like, my eyes were just, it was like I put lemon juice in my eyes. It was horrible just super stressful and my eyes all day were kind of bothering me. Um, I got it figured out, but still, especially at night, I had had them in all day and I couldn't really see the best and I was driving in fog and it was pitch black, of course, like midnight. And, um, and I was like really tired and I was really uncomfortable because I had these like skinny jeans on, whatever. <laughs> like not really my style, but happy wife, happy life, right? Um, so I was sitting there driving and uh, super uncomfortable, super tired, could hardly see, and I was just like, my head was bobbing, you know, not, not good. And in my mind, I'm like, man, I should really pull over to sleep. But it was foggy, like really foggy, and if I pulled over, someone could just like hit me, you know, and I didn't want to do that, so I just convinced myself to keep on going, so I did, and um, I wasn't thinking clearly at all either, and it was about, I got about 40 minutes away from Eau Claire, it was, I think it was 12.20 on the dot, and I was listening to like some music on my radio, like pretty loud to keep me awake, and all of a sudden, I noticed the radio just cut out, and then all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit just came upon me, and my, my vision, like, it was clear as day, like, clearer than right now. I could just see so clearly all around. I was just super comfortable. I had this energy, like, super focused. Um, and, you know, it was God. It wasn't anything I did. I, I didn't, like, I was praying, Lord, help me get there safe, of course. But turns out, my mom at 1220, as soon as that happened, she she saw on Life 360, whatever, she tracks me. And um, <laughs> she, was, she was looking on her phone, and she's like, well, he's like 40 minutes away. That's, you know, it's pretty late. I wonder if he's tired. And then she was worried, of course. And then at that minute, she prayed. And that's the exact, si exact same time the Holy Spirit came upon me and helped me make it through. So then I got home safely, and yeah, it was good. Hey, thank you for sharing that. And and by the way, when, when God does something, you know, like I would say this, if, if you have any kind of problem with your uh, leg or ankle, 
have Anna Lee pray for you, you know, just to say that when God moves. Or if you're tired, have Leah pray for you. No, just joking. <laughs> just, just teasing you. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, hey, the Lord is real. And God is moving, and he's, he's got a wonderful life for us. There's salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. Okay, so there's, there is no salvation outside of Jesus Christ. It's not in another religion, another philosophy, or, a, you know, or let's just say there's not a million ways to heaven. There's only one way to heaven that God has provided, and his name is Jesus. There's salvation, okay? You're, you're not going to go to heaven without Jesus, okay? You can't do it on your own. You can't earn your way to heaven. You can't do enough good things. You can't give enough money to the poor, whatever. However you try to do it, you can't do it. You just have to receive the gift of Jesus Christ. You have to turn from your sins and begin to follow him. And it's hard. It's hard because it's a new life. But let me tell you, it is so worth it because the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus Christ get, comes to give you life, abundant life. And not just life for now, but eternal life forever. And so if you're here today and you need to receive Jesus Christ, don't leave this place without receiving him. And we'll give you an opportunity to do that later. But um, right now, we're just, we're just rejoicing um, with Lizzie Wrench. We had our baptisms at the lake a couple weeks ago. Lizzie wasn't able to join us at that time, but she wanted to be baptized. And, and we're just so honored that, that uh, God has been moving in her life. And we just rejoice with her today. So, Lizzie, I'm going to invite you to come on up here. And, and Greg and Karen, if you could also come up. They've, they've been kind of... Uh, oh, so good. They, they've been kind of spiritual parents to, to Lizzie. And just so blessed and honored. So today, Lizzie Wrench is presenting herself for the sacrament of baptism. We rejoice in God's promises to her. The psalmist declares that the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon those who fear him, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. And the Apostle Peter, speaking by the Holy Spirit, says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you sh shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always to the close of the age. Obeying the word of our Lord Jesus Christ and certain of his presence with us, we baptize those he calls to be his disciples. In baptism, we celebrate what God has done for us, claiming us in Christ as his own, cleansing us of sin and renewing us in the Holy Spirit. In baptism, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection being raised to newness of life through baptism, we also become part of his body, the church. For all of this, God's grace and Lizzie, your commitment and your fellowship with us in the church, we give praise to God. And so now, Lizzie, do you desire to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? If so, say, I do. And Lizzie, do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord? And do you desire to live as his faithful disciple? If so, say, I do. I do. Amen. Well, I tell you, we're just so honored. And, and I always give people an opportunity. And Lizzie, if, if you have anything that you'd like to share uh, or say, you're welcome to do it. And would you have any something?
No, that's, that's okay. It's okay. It's all right. Well, praise the Lord. And we're just so thankful that you're here. And, and so um, as we come here to baptism, I'm just going to invite you to kneel here, Lizzie. As, so, Lizzie, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. Okay, you can stand up now. All right. Okay. Well, you know what? We're just so blessed and honored, Lizzie, and 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 I'm just. So we're going to just pray a prayer of blessing on Lizzie, and I'm just going to invite everybody to stand if you're able, and just maybe extend your hand where you're at, and, and Greg and Karen, if you could, I'm just going to pray a blessing on Lizzie. So Father, we just want to say thank you. God, you love Lizzie so much. She's your child, and now Lord God, through baptism, she is standing up here and bearing witness to her faith in you and the fact that she's received you as her Lord and Savior, that she's a Christian, and now she's going to follow you, Lord. And we just want to rejoice with her in this wonderful new life that you've given to her. We thank you for her testimony of standing up and saying, through baptism, saying, I am a follower of Jesus. And so, living God, we just invite you to just continue to move in power in Lizzie's life, God, every day from now on, just continue to fill her Holy Spirit and just bless her life, Lord, and surround her. And as a church, we pray that we would always encourage her in her walk, that we just walk with her and just bless her. We thank you for Greg and Karen and, and the testimony they've been over the years. But God, we are just praying a holy blessing upon Lizzie in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Praise God for that. Thank you, Lizzie. Oh, here, I'll take that. Thank you. And there you go. Okay, well, thank you. We're going to ask the worship team to come on up here and Once again, we'll just invite you to stand as we have our last song.
Okay, well, um, just to remind you, just a couple more announcements has already been said, but um, next week, if you're interested in learning more about this church, we're going to start the discovery class during Sunday school. It's one of the options uh, during Sunday school next week. Also, um, if you're interested in the KICY salmon thing, sign up for that today because we need to know that. Also, the choir. That's the other thing we got to kind of know by this week, right? Wherever, yeah, yes. So, um, and as we close, just to, again, um, if you have questions about coming to Jesus and, and following him, I, I'm going to be up here, uh, and I'd love to talk with you about that. If you have prayer things, uh, we, another change is that we have uh, changed one of our prayer locations. It isn't through that door. It's in the library now, there, and also that's one of the prayer places, and then also down the hall in the prayer room. So if you want prayer for anything, you're welcome for that too. But let's just close our time today with uh, praying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.